today we are completely transforming my builder grade entertainment center I have never liked it and I've been working tirelessly on this for weeks and I cannot wait to show you the final results I'm also going to be showing you how to style this entertainment center I've got great styling ideas plus we're going to be doing some high-end DIYs so let's get started this is what I am working with this entertainment center is really large I love this scale and I appreciate the crown molding on the top it's thick and grand and I love the decorative molding on the sides I think it is a beautiful feature so what needs to be changed about this entertainment center well it is builder grade which means it's got those drywall shelves those big thick drywall shelves made of two by fours they are textured they are not adjustable and the placement of these shelves has always stumped me I don't know what to put at the top and I don't know what to put at the bottom so I've just put mirrors in there which has been fine but I haven't ever really loved the way that it looks and the placement of the center shelf has impeded the height of my TV. So what I've had to do is get a coffee table because it's so low and put my TV on that. So it's not really ergonomical. I feel like we're looking down at the TV all the time and the coffee table that it's on is dark and I don't really love the style of it. So we are going to make some serious changes with regards to the center section. And then finally, the color of this entertainment center is the exact same color as the walls. So it just blends together. Now I actually have had a few of you ask me if this is removable and if there's windows behind it. There are not. The windows are actually above the entertainment center, which I really appreciate. I love the fact that I've got extra light coming in through. So while this entertainment center is nice, I have plans that are going to make it look 10 times better. It's gonna look custom, almost unrecognizable. You guys are just gonna be thrilled at the results. So first things first, let's get out those hammers and crowbars and start the demo. Now, of course, my husband and my twin boys were happy to jump in on this stage. They loved tearing everything apart that's fine with me I loved the help we peeled off that drywall we cut those two by fours we pulled everything down I even broke out my saza on the two by fours because they were protruding and I needed everything to be flush to the sides so that cut that wood so everything was nice and smooth on the sides and I will note that we did use a lot of protection because we have a lot of power tools and drills and saws and all kinds of things we're going to be using. So it was important that we all had gloves and eye protection and even earplugs. So make sure that if you're doing some demo to take safety precautions. Now that everything is demoed, it's ready to be customized. So I headed over to Lowe's and I purchased some large sheets of wood paneling because we're gonna panel the inside of our entertainment center. So I measured out the sizes that I needed to cut these panels to fit inside. Now, here's one tricky thing about working with drywall. It is not square. So I had to cut each one of these pieces individually because each of the measurements were a quarter to a half an inch off nothing could be duplicated everything had to be done one at a time once all nine panels were cut correctly i placed them inside of the niches and then nailed them with my nail gun into place to create an upscale tailored look we're going to add some trim to the back and create some box moldings now the molding that i got is similar to the molding that's already on my entertainment center it's close enough that you will never be able to tell the difference between them. I purchased this molding at Lowe's and what I'm going to do is take everything outside and get out my miter saw and start to cut. I had a whole lot of pieces to cut. I was out there for quite a while, but that's all right. We got it done. It's definitely worth it because I know this upscale trim will make my entertainment center look stunning. Before I nail my trim pieces into place, I like to do a quick dry run. 
So I actually tape the trim to the wall using blue painter's tape. This gives me the ability to see exactly what I'm working with. If I need to adjust the size or scale, I have the option to do that before I make things permanent. So once I had everything in place and correctly sized, I got my nail gun back out and I nailed everything in place. To make sure everything was square, I used a leveler. These are the levels with the little bubbles in it so you know everything is nice and straight. And again, because we are working with an uneven surface, it's important to get all of our measurements accurate. We do not want any ski wampus trim. <laughs> so once everything was nailed into place, it's time to do the boring part, which is filling up all those nail holes with wood putty. It's caulking. It's making sure that everything is pristine, clean, and ready to be painted. Let's take a break from building for just a minute and go on a shopping trip. We need a break. So what we're gonna look for, first of all, is some tables. Now, because we removed the shelves, I don't have any place to display anything. So I want to recreate that look with some small side tables. So I went to Home Goods and I found these stunning tables. I loved the shiny brass bases. They were intricately detailed and the top of these tables are round marble. They're the perfect size because I can add large decor items to the top of it, but it doesn't overwhelm the space. I purchased two of these marble brass side tables and they were $49 a piece. Each of these tables are gonna go inside of my niches, but we need something to put behind them. Now, what I did love about my original design were those mirrors that I had on the top shelf and the bottom shelf. I loved how it reflected light back into the room. I wanted to take this a little bit further and get a much grander mirror to put in each of the niches. I had an idea to do a floor to ceiling mirror and I found some beautiful mirrors at Hobby Lobby. These are six foot tall mirrors. The gold frame on these mirrors are stunning. It's thin and I love the elevated and recessed frame feature. And the top and the bottom had some gorgeous ornate details that I want to incorporate into the space as well. These are leaner mirrors, so I don't need to worry about hanging them up. I'm just simply going to place them inside of my niches and lean them up against the back. These mirrors were on sale. They were 50% off, so they ended up to be $229 a piece, which is a little pricey, but we are going to splurge just a little bit because I really want a high-end look, and these leaner mirrors are classic, and they are great investment pieces that I can use over and over again. Now, remember that dark, low coffee table that my TV was on? Well, we're gonna say goodbye to that coffee table and we are going to get a new console table. I looked for months to find a perfect fit that would go in this space, that was the right color, that had the right details on it, and I finally found one online. It is a stunning cabinet piece. Me and my boys put this together. I love how much taller it is now. It fits perfectly in that cutout. Now the cutout that's in that entertainment center right now was originally for like those big fat TVs, the ones that you like roll in there. So it is quite deep, but this cabinet takes up the size and it fits in there beautifully. I also love the raised detail on it. And when I was designing, I had a vision in mind where I wanted those round knobs at the front and I can't believe I found one. The gold is perfect for this space. Okay, we've made some good progress about buying our design items, but now it's time to get back to work. We've got to paint this entertainment center. And the paint that I'm going to be using is a bear, polar bear paint. The paint that I'm using on the entertainment center is the same paint that I used on my kitchen cabinets. So these two pieces are going to tie together color-wise. So what I had to do first of all was paint this paint on. Now usually I just use my paint sprayer, which we are going to use, but because we had so many different types of materials, I had to paint on the first coat. The drywall will absorb more paint 
than the wood or the trim. So I had to roll on this first layer of paint. Once this first coat had been painted on, I looked at it and it looked terrible. <laughs> first coats always look terrible. So don't worry if you put a first coat of paint on and you're like, what have I done? Don't worry, it's just a base coat. Things can only go up from here. So now that that coat had been dried, it's time to tape off around my entertainment center. I got some blue painter's tape and some paper and then I added some cardboard to the top and then I tinted the whole thing with some plastic. Now let's spray this. I got my paint sprayer and I sprayed everything. I love using a paint sprayer because it gives you a professional finish. You can't see any brush strokes. It gets into all those little nooks and crannies that you may have missed with a paintbrush and it coats everything evenly. And when I use my paint sprayer, I can bust out my paint spraying outfit, which is those sweet shorts and that hot pink shirt the shower cap, the gloves, the glasses, and the mask. So I am looking good while I'm doing this, but at least everything is covered. I did end up doing four coats of paint on this entertainment center. I wanted to make sure that everything was 100% covered in the paint and that it looked like a professional piece of furniture that had come from the store. Once my final coat was on, I let everything dry overnight. Now it's time to unveil our entertainment center. This is my favorite part. Pulling down all that plastic and pulling up the paper, peeling off the blue painter's tape. It's like opening a gift that you've worked so hard on and you finally get to see the results. You guys, this looks so good. It is just what I had envisioned. It looks customized. It does not look like a builder grade entertainment center anymore. The wood paneling is stunning. The entire piece looks like it was crafted from one piece of wood. So yes, this did take a lot of time and effort, but it was 100% worth it. Now it's time to decorate it. We're going to start off by sliding our cabinet into place. This piece looks like it was always meant to be there. It coordinates beautifully. I just am so happy I found this piece. Now let's move on to our niches. First, we're gonna put the leaner mirrors in the niche. Now, I did not do this. I had my husband and my boys do this. These mirrors are very heavy, so they used their muscles and put these mirrors in place for me. Now you may be wondering, why am I putting the mirrors in and covering up all that beautiful molding? Well, because we are not hanging up these mirrors, it's not a permanent fix. So I can pull these mirrors out later and hang some pictures between the box moldings or do some kind of other design. But I really love the way that these mirrors look. I cannot believe how much more open it makes this space look. It reflects so much light back into the room and it really does make this space feel so much larger. Next, we're gonna add those tables right in front of the mirrors. I just popped them right in the center. And on top of these tables, we're going to do a DIY really quick. We are going to create what else but some flower arrangements. You guys know I love flower arrangements, so we are going to do that. I went to Home Goods and I found these stunning containers. I love these containers so much because they are not only contemporary on the top, but they are classic on the bottom. The combination of these two design styles is perfect for the space because it's adding to that transitional feel that I'm going for. Now, these containers are quite large. And if I were to fill them up with floral foam, I would need several packages. So what we're going to do is we are going to fill the center with some metal chicken wire that I found at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance for $2.49. I enrolled this chicken wire. I got some heavy duty clippers and I cut the chicken wire in half. Because I have two floral arrangements, I needed two large pieces of chicken wire. I took this chicken wire and rolled it up and then stuffed it inside of my ceramic container. Then I simply took my floral foam and placed it over the top. 
You guys know that I reuse my floral foam, so don't be concerned that there are holes in this floral foam. It still works. So once the floral foam had been put inside the top of the container, I topped it off with some moss. To tack it into place, I got some floral pins and that will keep the moss in place. I think orchids are classic, elegant, and timeless, and they're also tall. And because our niches are tall, we need something to take up that space. So I headed over to Michael's and I picked up some stems of orchids. I really like the orchid stems at Michael's because they are affordable and then I always use a coupon which brings the price down even further. So what I'm gonna do with my orchid stems are simply place them inside of the floral foam. I'm just gonna poke them right in there. I placed five orchid stems inside of the floral foam. Now because the orchids are tall, they are a little bit flimsy. So to give them some support, what I'm gonna do is get some bamboo sticks, place them right next to my orchid stem, and then get a piece of raffia, tie a knot with the raffia, and then cut off the excess. These bamboo sticks will give these orchid stems support so they are not flopping all over the place. Now that our orchid stems are in place, we are going to add some leaves to the bottom. I'm actually going to use some magnolia leaves. I think that they look very similar to orchid leaves. I'm going to poke several of these magnolia leaves in the bottom to fill up that space. And now our orchid arrangement is completed. I think it looks so timeless, so elegant, and just what I need for these niches. Once I was finished with my first orchid arrangement, I repeated the process on my second orchid arrangement. I mimicked them identically so that we would have a cohesive look in each one of our niches. Now at this point, I took a picture and I sent it to my friend Natalie from Design to the Nines who lives just down the street as she came running over to see it because that's what friends do, right? We gotta show each other our projects. So she came over and she said, you know what would make this look even better is if you added some lights at the top inside of each of the niches. And I couldn't have agreed more. The only problem is I don't have any electrical up there. So I thought, you know, maybe I could head over to Lowe's and get some puck lights and put those in there, which is what I did. I found this package of six and it was about $35. And these lights are perfect because they are not permanent. You attach them to your space with some command strips. I press these lights firmly to the top center of each of the niches. And in the future, if I want to, I can have some lights permanently placed inside. These lights are so great because it comes with a remote. So I don't have to reach up and press anything on. I just turn them on with a remote. They're also dimmable. So I can have bright lights or I can have more ambient lighting. And they also have a timer feature, which is great. Adding the lights to these niches was the final touch that this entertainment center needed. All right, everybody, we are finished with our builder grade entertainment center makeover. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited to show you, but let's take a look back really quick and see where we started. If you remember, this entertainment center had those big, thick drywall shelves. The shells were awkwardly placed. It was monochromatic. We had that dark rustic coffee table holding up the TV and the TV was far too low. And here is the final exquisite newly updated entertainment center. Its beauty and elegance are truly captivating. I believe it adds a touch of luxury and sophistication to my space. The trim and the wood look custom and expensive. The mirrors make the space look twice as large. The gold ornate frame adds a traditional element to the niches. I think the tables were a great swap. Instead of having the shelves, now we have these tables. I like those so much better. And the orchid arrangement on top of each of these tables adds that elegance to the space. They are slender and add to the streamlined look I'm going for. The lighting brings everything to life. The new console table in the center raises the TV to the proper height while adding a luxurious look to the center niche. Let's talk about the paint. 
the white paint on this entertainment center brightens up this space so much. It makes everything look cohesive. And because it was monochromatic before, it looked like it was part of the wall. Now it looks like a standalone entertainment center that was a customized built-in. All the weeks of work and stress were completely worth it because I absolutely love the way that this looks. And because we DIY'd it ourselves, we saved so much money, I can't even imagine how much it would have cost me to have somebody come do this for me. So by putting in a little elbow grease, I was able to get a custom, gorgeous look for so much less. One downfall of having such a beautiful piece is looking right next to it and seeing the fireplace. <laughs> right now, this fireplace is not up to par. I don't like the mantle that's on there. It's just straight across. But guess what, you guys, right now I'm tired and I don't wanna do any more big projects. But the fireplace is on the short list of projects that I would like to do in the next little bit. Because we are not going to do that today, I will show you how I decorated it. We're gonna start off by putting a stunning print in the center. This print is from my website and I absolutely love the flowering trees and the colors that it adds. It's subtle but yet it adds elegance to the space. The prints that you purchase from my website are mailed to you and all you need to do is put them in a frame of your choice. So that's exactly what I did. This frame is ornate and it coordinates beautifully with the gold that's on our mirrors. I will leave a link to my website so you can check out the prints there and also to this specific print that I'm using on my fireplace design. Now on either side of my print, I have some ginger jars. These are white ginger jars that are typically in my room, but I'm borrowing them today and they're gonna go on top of my fireplace. The reason why is because I love how classic these look. These are not fussy, they're streamlined, and they add a simple elegance. In fact, I would say the overall scheme of this look right now is classic simplicity. There's not anything that's overwhelming anything else. Everything is streamlined and intentionally placed. This Builder Grade Entertainment Center makeover was truly a labor of love. I put a lot of time, effort, and thought into this, and I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome. It was definitely worth all the hard work. This entertainment center is going to help me live beautifully throughout the entire year because I can decorate it for the different seasons and holidays, and it's going to be an elegant backdrop for all of my DIYs. I hope you liked this Builder Grade Entertainment Center makeover as much as I do. Hopefully you got some inspiration or some ideas of how you can decorate your house beautifully. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I can share those with you. Thank you so much for watching.